Hey folks, Ron here. Uh, today I'm showing you the home of, and it's right across the street, the former home of the guitar player and the songwriter for the band, the famous Robbie Robertson, who's also a film composer. He does most of the Martin Scorsese pictures. Let's take a look at the home here. Now what's interesting here is that, sorry, it's one over. When I first drove up here, I said, oh God, please don't let it be the one under construction because that has happened to me before. I get all the way to the home after driving a half hour and it's under construction. Here in LA, they're almost all under construction. So uh, I was worried, but thank God it's not. Uh, anyway, so what's interesting also about this home, I've got the dog here with me as you can see, and they're doing construction right next door. So here's the home, very not ostentatious. Actually, Robbie Robertson's former wife, ex-wife, is still on title at this home. And she is a psychotherapist now, specializing in addiction studies, I believe, here in Santa Monica. So let's see, we've got the gardeners, the landscaping guys, we've got construction. The dog is pulling me. I'm going to come back to the house before we adjourn today. So, yeah, it's another hot day. That's why I got the wife beater on. Um, so, Robbie Robertson, well, the story of the band, I know them well. As a matter of fact, Robbie Robertson put out a book about his experiences with the band and his life um, a couple of years ago called Testimony. I think it was a bestseller. I own it. He also did a show, or he created or produced a documentary on the group, the band, the five guys in the band. And it's called Once We're Brothers. And they actually had a screening of it in February 2020 in Hollywood. And I went and he was there doing a little interview. Uh, after we watched the film, he did an interview and it was very interesting. Uh, and I read uh, the late Levon Helms book on the band and Barney Hoskins book on the band. So yes, I'm a fan of the band. They have a create, created some great music, but a, a dark history, a darkness about them. Um, heroin and the town of Woodstock in the late 60s and early 70s. So the band, let's talk about the band for a minute, of which Robbie Robertson was a, you know, sort of, as we could say, sort of a founding member. The band were five guys. It was Levon Helm, Rick Danko, Garth Hudson, Richard Manuel, and Robbie Robertson. And all the guys except Levon Helm, whose real name was Mark Helm, Mark Levon Helm, all the guys were Canadian and except for Levon. Levon's band used to play up in Canada and that's how a guy named Ronnie Hawkins, also Canadian, found the guys in the band. Oh, you gotta take my care of my dog, be right back to you. So they were playing, they were the band for Ronnie Hawkins, who was a wild and crazy guy. I believe he still is a wild and crazy guy. In fact, if you don't know too much about Ronnie Hawkins, just watch him on The Last Waltz, which was the Robbie Robertson created last final concert of the band, all five guys together, in 1976, Thanksgiving in San Francisco. Anyway, so they played behind Ronnie Hawkins, and then eventually, Levon especially wanted to leave Ronnie Hawkins and for the guys to create their own band. And they did, and they called it Levon and the Hawks, and then it was just the Hawks. And they were playing around Canada and the United States, and Robbie, in particular, was getting a great education on the American South from Levon, uh, who was from Arkansas. Uh, and th that helped in uh, the creation of some of the future classic songs that Robbie wrote, like Night They Drove All Dixie Down. Anyway, so eventually the Hawks were picked up. Bob Dylan heard of the Hawks, and he was going to create a band leave his just solo acoustic guitar playing behind and create a band and he hired the Hawks. And you know, they, they wanted the money and the experience, the exposure of playing with Bob Dylan. So they went and did that for qu quite a long time and Robbie in particular got to know Dylan very well. Um, and they were playing the, the Hawks now just, well, they really didn't have a name. They were just Bob Dylan's band at that point. Um, they, we're at, I believe it was the Newport Folk Festival in 1966 when Dylan was booed and called Judas because he's he and his band, this band, were playing 
uh, electric. He started applying electric for the first time. Uh, anyway, and Levon didn't like being booed. So for a while, he left. And he was, like, working on oil rigs, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And the band, the group, had moved up to where Bob Dylan was up in the town of Woodstock, New York. So at that point, um, and they were kind of jamming all the time, but and planning to maybe record and planning to record for themselves. In fact, they started writing the the group started writing a little bit and covering some Dylan songs and playing and jamming with Dylan and without Dylan, um, which and eventually came out was called the Basement Tapes. Anyway, they finally uh, got Levon to come back and join them in Woodstock and record this new album, record this album they wanted they wanted to do work on their own. And you know, in in first they were gonna call themselves the Honkies. Then it was the Crackers. Then they were just known as the band, quote unquote the band, around Woodstock and the bars and restaurants. So they decided to call themselves the, just simply the band. And I think it was on an acetate of one of the demos or something, but suffice it to say they became known as just simply the band. So, we're going to look at this beautiful neighborhood, too. So, the band put out their first album, uh, and it was called Music for Big Pink, from Big Pink in 1968. They were, a couple of the guys were renting a house. They were actually in a town called Socrates, if I'm hoping I'm not mispronouncing it in New York. And it was a big pink house, which is still there. Fans go to it all the time. And they called it uh, Music from Big Pink, and they covered a couple of Dylan songs. And uh, Robbie wrote most of the songs, which he continued to do throughout his tenure with the band. And then, uh, like, uh, The Wait uh, was on there. And anyway, I think I should be, and not I shall be released, that was later. Anyway, the band became very famous very quickly, and their second album, which is their best album, that's really their classic album, just called the band, otherwise known as the Brown album, because it was Brown that had the night they drove all Dixie down, Dixie down and Cripple Creek Ferry. Robbie Robertson became the principal songwriter for the band. He, you know, there's two schools of thought. Some fans of the band really hate Robbie because they think that he stole songwriting credit from Levon and and I guess Richard in particular. But you really have to research it, and I have researched it. And I believe what happened was Robbie probably did take some liberties with the publishing, but also he was the only one who didn't get into alcohol and especially heroin in starting in the town of Woodstock. Uh, Richard Manuel was a brilliant voice. I mean, all the guys were brilliantly talented. In fact, the band was a band of five guys who, if one were gone, they would have disbanded. I mean, I shouldn't say that because when Robbie left, they did continue, but it was never the same. You really needed all five guys. And Richard Manuel, the keyboard player, and they're all multi-instrumentalists too, uh, he had a beautiful voice, a real soulful voice, but he was a very uh, tormented person and a major alcoholic even when he was in his 20s starting in, in Canada. And his drug use and his alcoholism prevented him from helping Robbie write as the albums. You know, they had, an eight, I think, an eight-album contract. He stopped writing. Robbie says he begged Richard to keep helping him write, and after the second album, the guys kind of stopped helping him write, according to Robbie. Leave on, too. And Rick Danko. Um, those three guys uh, used a lot, used a lot of substances, and drank a lot, and were crashing cars, and impaired a lot of the time. In fact, Rick had crashed his car yet again up in Woodstock and right after their second album their most famous best-selling album and he was in bed basically couldn't move for months at a time they couldn't tour um, but also that led to the mysterious allure of the band and then they were on Time magazine but nobody had seen them play except for I think at Woodstock so anyway it, it's a complicated story but suffice it to say Robbie Robertson has songwriting credit on most of the band's songs. And then when the album contract came up, he said he was tired. He feared their health was at stake. Levon Helm famously said, I ain't in it for my health. And that's uh, that's uh, the title of uh, his book. And unfortunately, Levon did die of cancer, just uh, I think in 2012 or 2014. And Robbie's still going strong, God bless him, hopefully. 
So, um, Robbie had the idea with his new friend Martin Scorsese to do the last waltz. There was a concert, basically where the band started, at I think the Winter Winter Haven Winter. I don't remember the name of the venue, but it was in San Francisco where they I think they had their first American concert and they had the last one there too. That was all Robbie's idea, all his creation. Levon hated the idea. And uh, they did their last concert and Robbie said they might get back together, but he never came back to the band. The other four guys continued without him uh, into the 80s, touring, not recording, I don't believe. Uh, and you know, they didn't write songs. They could have, but they didn't write songs. Um, I, and unfortunately, Richard hung himself. He died in 1986 in a motel room somewhere in the south, I believe. Very, very sad. In fact, Levon felt, found his body and then Rick, just terrible. And in fact, um, Richard's late wife is in Malibu somewhere. I think she's like a crystals psychic healer or something. Anyway, and then uh, Rick died. I think he had some heart problems in the late 90s and Levon died. Uh, in, like I said, uh, 2012, I believe. So Garth Hudson and Robbie are the only two left. And then Robbie started doing these film scores for his friend Martin Scorsese, uh, a lot of them, uh, a lot of them, um, including The Irishman. Um, so you know, Robbie, while well, also doing some solo albums, but the big joke was, you know, they turned Robbie's mic down, supposedly at Woodstock, because Rob, Robbie is really not a singer. Um, anyway, but great film composer, great life for himself, and he did, I believe, live there with his wife. Robbie's also just recently sold a place in Mal in uh, Beverly Hills, which unfortunately I can't find the address to. So um, I'm showing you what I can. And in fact, there was one quick note about his ex-wife um, here in the home that I showed you, and I'll show you again, is she and Robbie, who met, I believe, in 66 or 67, um, she's French. I believe that they went on a trip in 72 with Joni Mitchell and David Geffen of all things who were a couple. I don't know if they were actually a couple. I think they were. I think that that was what was it, being attempted anyway. And they went to Paris and Joni wrote Free Man in Paris because she said that David Geffen finally seemed to relax once they were on holiday together. Anyway, uh, but Robbie and his ex were on that trip. All right, folks, I'm going to come back to you in front of the house in a minute, and we'll continue from there. All right, so we're going to take another look at the home here. It's the one right next to the one under construction there. Let's go across again. So, yeah, it's a very beautiful neighborhood here. And, uh, in fact, there's a, I, I read somewhere, I saw somewhere that after she and Robbie broke up. Robbie wants to actually live with Martin Scorsese when Robbie was staying out late on dates or whatever, going out afterwards, Scorsese would worry about him. Where are you? Where are you? I was worried about you. <laughs> this is days before cell phones. All right, folks, so we'll call it there. My name is Ron. Thanks very much for watching and listening. If you like the channel, please subscribe. If you have not already subscribed, and if you do, please hit the little bell icon next to the subscription button, and you'll be notified as to when I post. Please give the channel likes. I would really appreciate that, folks. That will really get the channel moving, and we'll see you at the next location. All right, guys. Thanks. See you. Bye.